All right, so uh, the problem of regression. Now, uh, remember that I said uh, that this is a problem. Let me, let me just draw it out again. So this is a problem of too much data. Now, and, and trying to reduce that problem uh, to less data. Now, you may not realize it, but you've actually seen uh, uh, simple regression problems before. Uh, if, if you uh, took eighth grade math, uh, you might have uh, learned a little bit of a little bit of statistics and so I'm going to represent this a little bit different than uh, the classic way that you you may have seen it uh, but but basically what we're going to do how, how I'm going to step through this lesson on regression is we're going to learn first what you should already know but we're going to review it uh, basic statistics and what that is 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 it's essentially fitting uh, it, it's curve fitting, so so it is it is curve fitting, but you're fitting a line, a horizontal line, okay? And we may have a little bit more spread to this data, okay? So I don't know. I'm trying to be not systematic exactly about how I put maybe one here, one out here. So this is this is our our data that we have. And so then we might ask, well, okay, how are we going to represent that? Well, uh, you see this, you see this red line that I've drawn on it. That red line, and 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 let's let's just go ahead and and put our axes on here. So, uh, well, we have our x-axis here, and our y-axis here. Okay, this is our y direction. All right, so uh, we have some value here, right? If we were to draw a horizontal line. Uh, to represent this data, this this horizontal line, it, it, there's a notion of that. That's sort of the central tendency of the data, and you may have seen it before. Uh, we call that the mean. So uh, I like to do a different color. So mu, that's that line. Okay, the the mean, that's the line. And then the other thing that we do, and, and you've seen these before. Uh, is is we, we we draw a whole distribution about this line, and I'm going to do it like oh I don't know let's see. So I'm going to do it right here. So I'm going to draw a vertical line here, and you may have seen what's called the normal distribution. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll assume that this data is distributed normally. So not to confuse what that's pointing to, uh, but that's that's our mean. So no, that's still good. That's that line that it's pointing to here. All right. So then, uh, the idea here is, is we we don't only quantify the information about uh, the line. Uh, we also codify when we do re when when we do this 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 regression, which which is just the basic statistics that you've learned before and, and we look at this the other thing that we do is we quantify the spread and so if you'll remember there's uh, so this is the normal distribution and I'll write out the equation for that in a minute but this here this distance here we called that sigma okay that's the um, that's the variance that's the distance uh, and, and then we 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 um, normalize all this, and so uh, one standard deviation is is the amount uh, that it takes to get a, a certain percentage under this curve. But uh, er, excuse me, a, for a certain percentage of the of the points are are within that range. And so one example that we might look at is height. So let's say let's say we're analyzing the height. The height of all males in the U.S. Okay. Well, fine. Um, actually, uh, uh, you may not know this. The mu, the mean, turns out to be about um, the 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 mean turns out to be about seventy inches which is 510 5 foot 10 inches and uh, the standard deviation one standard deviation is about 
three inches. So uh, that's that. Um, now the equation for this distribution. Uh, let me just write it out, and I'll write it out in terms of in terms of y. So let me get a good color. So the equation for that distribution that distribution. The equation for that is, uh, so I've got to write it out as a function of y because as you see it's not a function of x. I've written it as a function of y. We could write it as a function of x, um, but I'm, I'm tipping it sideways on purpose <laughs> because the next thing we're going to fit is, is going to be a curved line and then we'll fit a quadratic and, and, and other forms of, 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 of behavior and so that w we want to look at this constant so we really want to look at it sideways because that's what gets us started here and so f of y is equal to 1 over sigma uh, square root of 2 pi uh, times e to the negative y minus mu quantity squared divided by uh, 2 sigma squared. Okay, that is, uh, that's the equation of this line here. Okay, so it, it's as simple as that and, and what we've done here then is we've reduced all of this data that we had here, all of this data, and, and we see if we just fit a horizontal line, then uh, perhaps the order doesn't matter so much. But if we're if we're fitting a linear line, then the order is going to matter a lot. And so that's why uh, we we look at it this way. But um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, let me let's look at real quick uh, these equations uh, a little bit more. So we have the variance, um, or, or excuse me, let's just look at the equation for the standard deviation. And so the standard deviation, and this is an idea that the idea is how much error. And I could actually sort of like dot in that line all across here, right? That vertical line, and you get the idea. It, it's it's an it's a, how much how many percent of, of, of the things are in here. And so the equation for that is uh, sigma squared, and I'm going to just call that the um, standard deviation, equals um, the square root of, well, excuse me, the standard deviation is that, but it doesn't have a. It, it does have a square root, but it's not sigma squared. It's just sigma. So it's the square root of uh, the sum from i equals one to n of y i minus um, mu quantity squared divided by n. Now, actually, there is a difference between the standard deviation and the sample standard deviation. And so I'm, I'm going to write n minus 1 because this is how, how we actually do it. Uh, but, but the explanation, n minus 1, and we'll get into this a little bit more, n minus 1 is the degrees of freedom. And the whole reason that it's n minus 1 instead of n is is because we we aren't sampling all the males in the U.S. We're only sampling a sub part of them, and so to be unbiased, we're we're trying to estimate the standard deviation of the original distribution of all males. But um, the the best way to do that turns out to be dividing by n minus one. So uh, just note that. Now here, uh, let's look at this. Okay, we have this y i minus mu quantity squared. And I'm going to give that a special name, and that. So let's just look at one data point. And so let's say this is let's say this is y i, okay? Because i is maybe right here. This is this is i, and so y i. Well, let's say this is yeah. This is x i, and for every x i we have a y i. So y i 
minus mu quantity squared. Well, what is that? Well, what that is, is it's just the distance, that's the vertical distance here, right, between the, the mean, right here, between the mean and this point, okay? So I'm going to call that point, I'm going to call that quantity E i. It's so e for error, okay? So that's the error. And so this is nothing more, and I'm going to erase this so it's not confusing, um, although we can we can just put that this is the, okay, anyway. So we have then uh, brush, yes, this is the error squared. Um, and, and we'll let's include all that. So that's the square of the error and all we're doing here then to, ca to compute the, the standard deviation is we're summing up all of the error squared. So we're sum of the squared errors and then we're dividing by n minus 1 which is like dividing by the number the total number so that it it, it normalizes it out and we take the square root of that. So this is the su the square root of the squ so this we're squaring here and then we take the square root. So uh, that makes some sense. Uh, and what it does then by by doing this square here is it penalizes more uh, uh, points that are further away. If the point is closer it doesn't penalize it so much. If it's further away then it penalizes it more and that quantity is then our standard deviation. Okay, now just a quick comment on the denominator here. This is called the degrees of freedom. That's the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom is actually equal to, so let's, let's come down here a little bit. Oh, we're running out of space. The degrees of freedom is equal to the number of estimated Uh, parameters. So it's the number of known parameters minus the number of estimated parameters. Number of known parameters minus the number of est estimated parameters. And so if we have a whole bunch of samples, if we have if we have n samples, eh, let's switch colors. So if we have n samples, then the number of known parameters, that's going to be n. And if we're only estimating the mean, so let's say we're estimating just uh, mu, we want to come up with mu, and so that's just going to be the sum, I did forget to say this, from i equals 1 to n, but you've seen it before, of uh, y i uh, over all over n. Okay, so that is, I should probably move this down. Okay. So that is the the mean, and uh, so that's the parameter that we're estimating. We're estimating the mean, and so we just we just say our degrees of freedom. Then our degrees of freedom equals df equals n. Excuse me, n minus one. Okay. So for this case. For the simple case of 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 a co estimated co constant, our degrees of freedom is equal to n minus one. 